Hey Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mont. Welcome into one of our brand new channels here at Chat Sports, where we go ahead and give you guys the latest Atlanta Falcons news and rumors. It's going to be a great channel for all you Falcon fans up there. Plenty of news and rumors today. We're going to jump into some of those stories here right now. All right, Falcon fans, let's go ahead and jump into the latest Atlanta Falcons news and rumors, starting off with the idea of Zach Ertz coming to Atlanta to go ahead and be the number one new star tight end for our Atlanta Falcons. So there is a report, of course, out there that's been going for the past couple of days that the Philadelphia Eagles are very close to trading Zach Ertz, potentially any day, and multiple teams, as we'll see via the NFL Network, have been calling the Eagles about trading Zach Ertz. Now, up to this point, Ertz has not been traded, so there's still a chance he could go ahead and be cut sometimes next week because he would rather be released. That way he can sign with any team that he wants. But if he's either released or he wants to go ahead and be traded or is traded, maybe the Atlanta Falcons could go ahead and make a run at Matt Ryan in terms of, or excuse me, make a run at uh, getting Matt Ryan a star tight end because Hayden Hurst last year wasn't terrible. I don't think they utilized him enough in the uh, dirt cutter offense, but Ertz would be a massive upgrade and could provide a lot of help for the Falcon offense going into 2021 and the brand new Arthur Smith regime. So this all comes again from Mike Silver's tweet. This was on Sunday. It just hasn't happened yet, but let's go back to Sunday. Uh, via the NFL Network, quote, Multiple teams have called the Eagles for the possibility of trading for three-time Pro Bowl tight end Zach Ertz, and a deal could happen in the coming days, according to two sources familiar with the talks at NFL Network and around the NFL. Okay. Again, I would like Zach Ertz in Atlanta. I mean, I think a lot of people would like Zach Ertz on their football team. However, money is difficult for the Ertz trade. So I think a trade would be a little bit more of a challenge for Phil or for not only for Philadelphia, but for the Atlanta Falcons. Because right now, Ertz is making like $10 million a year. You would prefer, if you're a Falcons fan who wants Zach Ertz, the Eagles to cut Zach Ertz or release Zach Ertz. And then you go ahead and sign him at a slightly discounted price in order to go ahead and meet the, uh, the budget concerns that a lot of Falcon fans have right now. Now, of course, Ertz, if you go back to 2020, didn't have a very good year. The numbers say he was probably his worst year as a tight end in the league, but he dealt with ankle injuries, he dealt with injuries all year long, and the Eagles offense was a total mess anyway, and so you kind of just erase the 2020 in your mindset and think back to like 2017, 2018, even 2019, Zach Ertz has been continues to be considered a top five tight end in this league and one of the best tight ends in the NFL. Him with Matt Ryan, along with Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, and perhaps a running back for that yet to be named, the Falcons could go ahead and grab in free agency or in the NFL draft could make for a very, 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 very scary Atlanta offense. Now, the flip side here is that some people will say you don't really need it because you, you already tra traded for Hayden Hurst last year. Like, do you really need Zach Hurts? But the combination of Hurts and Hurts could be really, really good. Money, again, is the problem. But because Hurts did have a bad year last year, he's coming off an injury, and the trifecta is he's over 30. All of that can combine for him to go ahead and take a discounted price and not being just paid as much as you would expect him to, to go ahead and play for the Atlanta Falcons. So, again... Trade could happen any day, but the longer it takes, the longer we wait for a trade to happen, it looks more likely he's going to be released, and that could become a big-time target for the Atlanta Falcons going into the 2021 NFL free agency, which is just a couple of days away. Atlanta still working to get underneath the cap, but they will obviously be able to do so because every team is able to go ahead and get underneath, underneath the cap. And once they do, then perhaps they throw some money at Zach Ertz to go ahead and bolster that offense. I'm curious what you guys think, right? Because... Again, like, should they trade for Zach Ertz? I'm, I'm going to gauge your guys' uh, uh, thought process on this. Why for yes and for no? If you're interested in getting a tight end, I want to hear from you. But if you're not and you want to just roll with Hayden Hurst, I think that's fine as well. I don't think Zach Ertz is a missing piece you've got to have in Atlanta. It's more like icing on the cake and that obviously would make the offense even better and even harder to defend because how do you defend Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley anyway? Plus a running game in Matt Ryan, throw in Zach Ertz, a top-level tight end, and it's like all these things combined to be very, very good and very, very scary. So again, the question. Should the Falcons trade for Zach Ertz? I want to see why down below for yes and down below if you don't want them to. Just, you know, no, not at all. But I'm curious. I want to hear from you guys and see how Falcon fans feel about the, the, the team with a brand new head coach and a brand new GM and getting ready for what should be a very interesting next couple of days and weeks as we not only have uh, NFL free agency, but the draft coming up number as well. And the Falcons have plenty of picks and plenty of high picks to go ahead and make some uh, good moves. So again, let me know what you guys think down below. All right, let's go ahead and move to this, and that is to say that welcome to the new channel, by the way. Make sure you guys are subscribed to our brand new Atlanta Falcons channel. We have just over 1,100 subscribers, but we're planning on growing and growing fast. So hit the bigger subscribe button down below as this is going to be your one-stop shop for everything Atlanta Falcons. I will be doing a lot of these videos, and that means we're going to have the latest Falcons news and rumors, so stay tuned here, but hit the red subscribe button help us grow. The more subscribers we have, the more videos we can go ahead and post to this channel. 
All right, Falcon fans, let's go ahead and jump into some more news and rumors here, talking about a double draft day trade and how it could be in the works. This comes via Daniel Jeremiah and the NFL Network, who was asked about the Falcons having the number four overall pick in the draft, and he thinks the team not only has needs other than quarterback, but could not only trade back from number four, but trade back from number four twice. Like, you go from number four, to let's say number 12 with the 49ers, I don't know, and then back again in order to pick up multiple first-round draft picks in the future and give Atlanta a lot more firepower in the later rounds of the NFL draft. What do you guys think? Should the Falcons trade down from number four, type T down below for trade, or type S down below for stay put? It's a fascinating thought process here that Daniel Jeremiah via the NFL Network has. We'll throw the quote up on the screen right now. Quote, when you look at the way the board shakes out, if you wanted to try and find an edge rusher, which is a need, you can make a strong case they could trade back twice. You know, trade back once for those teams coming up for the quarterbacks, and you might have somebody coming up for an offensive lineman. Probably trade back and get into the teens, and then you could find your way to Quiddy Pay from Michigan, Jalen Phillips from Miami, one of those types of players. Maybe even stay right there, get the edge rusher Ojolari from Georgia. To me, that might make that might there might be to me a double trade down opportunity for them. Now, I, I wouldn't hate this, and I think getting additional picks not only in the later rounds of this year, second and third round, but in the future, because you trade back from number four, you're getting additional first-round draft picks. I don't hate the idea. I think in my heart of hearts and in your heart of hearts, you understand that the Falcons are probably going to take a quarterback at number four. Like, I, I really think Atlanta takes a quarterback at number four. I'm not on board with that. I'd rather trade back once and get a, a cornerback, maybe get a pass rusher, maybe get uh, even even – um, something like a linebacker, I think, would all make sense right now. Maybe an offensive lineman for the Atlanta Falcons. But I think in our heart of hearts, we expect Atlanta to go ahead and take a quarterback at number four. And there's nothing that we can do to change the minds, I should say, of Terry Fontenot, the new GM, and Arthur Smith, the new head coach. If they were to trade back and look for an edge rusher, there are options, but not a lot of them are that special. You want to take them anywhere inside the top ten. So that's why the double trade was offered here by the NFL Network, because you would take a quitty pay out of Michigan. 15, 16, 17, you'd take a Jason... Uh, Oh, way out of Penn State, a Gregory Rousseau out of Miami. They mentioned Aziz Ojolari out of UGA. And then, as they said, Jalen Phillips out of Miami as well. All these are good pass rushers and would make sense for the Atlanta Falcons. The problem is, is that at four, none of these guys make sense. And even trading back to, like, nine, these guys don't make sense as well. They do need pass rusher, and we do understand that they have got to go ahead and sign somebody because the defensive end depth chart in Atlanta is brutal. I mean, it is very, 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 very bad, and they need to go ahead and have that superstar pass rusher because Dante Fowler didn't really pay, uh, pan out, and of course, they've had all the different problems going back to like Tack McKinley, who's obviously no longer even on the Atlanta Falcons. So trading back not only once but twice is definitely an option, although I think all of us who uh, think about the Atlanta Falcons, you and I right now, would probably understand that Atlanta's probably going to go ahead and uh, and stay at four and take a quarterback, whether that's Trey Lance or whether that is somebody else like a Justin Fields or a Zach Wilson. Don't really know which one. What do you guys think? Who should the Atlanta Falcons draft in round one? Give me a comment down below. I'm curious if you're stuck on quarterback, if you want someone else. I don't think wide receiver or tight end, but that's even been talked about, so I'm not really sure. But I just want to see what you guys think uh, down below right now in the comment section. Just give me your thoughts in terms of what you want the Atlanta Falcons to do with their first-round draft pick, whether it's trade back, like Daniel Jeremiah said, or stay put and take a quarterback. Both are legitimate options, and both I think Atlanta is going to go ahead and think about over the coming days and weeks. All right, final bit of news here on this edition of uh, on the Falcons channel, and that is quickly, Jake Matthews has restructured his contract. That saves the Atlanta Falcons $8.6 million. That's big going forward for the Atlanta Falcons, who are currently now about $8.75 million over the cap. They did have a cap hit that's going to be big for Jake Matthews this year, but they are going to save some money there and probably keep him as a starting left tackle. I think mean, this is probably an indication they want to keep Jake Matthews as a starting left tackle, but this is good news because they have to do it. Go ahead and get underneath the cap. And then also, and finally, it looks like they have still not talked about Grady Jarrett's restructuring. So there's reports out there the Atlanta Falcons have not reproached uh, Grady Jarrett about restructuring his contract, as that, of course, is coming uh, due here pretty soon. But the, I think the issues are is that right now, Garrett's cap hit is really, really high behind Julio Jones and Matt Ryan. It's sitting about $20.83 million. And they're trying to figure out what they want to do to get underneath, underneath the cap as it stands. I don't think they let Grady Jarrett walk anytime in the future. I think they will restructure his contract. But right now, they have not had any sort of conversations, according to Jeff Schultz as the, of The Athletic. And that is a little little bit concerning if you are an Atlanta Falcon fan. But of course, Grady Jarrett is signed for at least going into the 2021 season. He will be there in 2021, so no need to panic yet. But it's interesting that they've started to restructure the Matthews one as the first domino to fall. They will do more stuff, but Grady Jarrett apparently not on the horizon, according to The Athletic and Jeff Schultz. All right. 
Before we go ahead and end, make sure you guys subscribe to our new Atlanta Falcons channel here at Chat Sports as we are going to try to grow it as quickly as possible in order to get you guys more videos. The more videos we do, but there's also the more people want to watch the videos, meaning you guys should go ahead and hit that bigger subscribe button down below. And of course, leave your comments as well as we're just getting started and big things are coming here for our new Chat Sports Atlanta Falcons YouTube channel. For Chat Sports, I am Thomas Mott as we go ahead and sign off. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your day.